Hey folks, thanks for coming. I want to talk today about a topic which is quite close to my heart. It's called behavior-driven development. Now you may have heard of behavior-driven development. You may have heard that it's this thing where you use given when then a lot. I often actually see people talking about behavior-driven development and they say things like, well, that's where you write your test scripts using given when then. Or that's where you use Cucumber for test automation. Or maybe they say, well, that's where you have all these UI tests for your end-to-end -end scenarios. And again, maybe you write them using this given when then notation. And you know what? It makes me cringe. Because when you've really done behavior-driven development, when you've worked with teams that do it well, when you've seen what it can do for people, when you've seen what it can do for teams, it's a real shame to see it go to waste because if you do BDD well, the benefits are truly massive. It reduces defects enormously. It cuts defects. I mean, I've seen it go, defects go down to 80, by 80, 90%. I've seen literally cases where you'd start off with maybe 30 defects in a release and then after, after six or nine months of doing BDD, you just don't get defects anymore. But that's just the start because not only do you reduce defects, but you have happy customers. You release software that actually benefits them. You have happy teams. You have people who understand what they're working with, understand what they're doing, understand what the value is. So where's the controversy? Why is BDD so controversial? That's weird, eh? Because what I think is that I think people misunderstand what behavior-driven development is all about. They misunderstand the technique, which often happens in Agile. It often happens in IT, to be fair. You see people pick up a technique, they misunderstand it, they apply it, they do it wrong, and then they say it's rubbish. For example, what you might see is teams where a BA or a product owner writes requirements using this given when then format. I've seen teams where this is mandated, where this is, so they say, this is how you will write given when then. You'll put given when then into your jurors. And what happens then? Well, in most cases, it makes things harder. It slows down your requirements discovery process because you don't have a requirements discovery process. It just makes it harder for the BAs to write things because although given when then can be a really clean, precise, and, and effective notation if it's done well. It's not really a natural way to write things. You need practice. You need skill to do it this way. It's harder for BAs who aren't trained in this technique to write, so often they'll miss important details. And they'll often end up writing these scenarios, which are basically pretty much rubbish, you need to throw them away, start again, and try and go back to the drawing board and figure out what they actually meant. And we don't want that, do we? The other thing that happens is that you'll get teams where they think they're doing BDD because they're writing test scripts using the given when then notation. They're using Cucumber for their automation, so surely that's BDD, right? Well, in most cases, if you do use something like Cucumber, if you use this given when then notation, if you add this layer on top of your test automation without focusing on the conversations, without focusing on understanding the business requirements, without focusing on articulating the requirements and writing executable specifications, you'll get into trouble. I could write perfectly clean and readable test scripts, even in a business language, but in plain Java or JavaScript without the added complexity of Gherkin without adding that complexity on top that would slow me down. I don't need Gherkin for that. But the real reason that given when then is so bad for test scripts is that most times when you write given when then test scripts, they become really hard to maintain. They're not written in the spirit that Gherkin is supposed to be written. They're written with lots of given this, given that, when, 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 then, then, when, then, and, and, and. Lots of clicks, lots of selects, lots of interactions. It becomes very, very hard to maintain. And we don't want that either, do we? So, I've told you what BDD isn't. What is it? 
Well, behaviour-driven de development at its heart is a collaboration practice. It's where you sit down with your team, with your product owner, with your BA, and you have a conversation. You work through examples of what an application should do, what a feature should do. You work through the constraints, the rules, the examples, the counterexamples. You use structured techniques like example mapping and feature mapping and impact mapping and lots of others. But we use these techniques to have structured conversations so that the information doesn't go out the window and get forgotten, so that the conversations are more productive and flow better, and so that the outcomes get recorded as you make them. Otherwise, you forget details. The conversation is pretty useless if it's not recorded. You need to record it. It needs to be structured so that we get the coverage we want as well. We need to make sure we understand all of the nuances, all the subtleties in a requirement, and that everybody's on board. And then what we do is we take those examples and those rules and we write them down in a very structured way, a very, very specific way, a clean, readable, business readable way that identifies the key rules and examples and counterexamples and gives you that confidence that you have understand, understood what a feature does. And we can use given when then for that, when we actually write down our understanding of the requirement. And then we can automate that if it makes sense. We can automate the given when then, and that will give us faster feedback, give us automated regression tests as well as a kind of bonus. It makes us, gives us documentation of our product, of our business rules. We know exactly what an application is doing at the moment, and it makes it easier to change because when we change something, we can come back and update the business rule. We know exactly what we need to change. So it improves the general flow as a, as a whole, which is really, really powerful. But the essence of BDD really is that conversation. If you're not starting with the conversation, you'll get none of the benefits of BDD. You'll just get the overhead and the extra costs. But if you do do BDD the way the experienced practitioners do it, the way we've been doing it for well, 10, 15 years, BDD's been around. It's, been, it's not a new technique, but not a lot of people do it well. If you put, and you do need to put some effort into changing the way you work. It's not a tool set. It's not plug and play. You do need to change the way you think, change the way you approach your development practices. If you can do that, then it will work wonders. It gives really, really good outcomes. So give it a go. Thank you.